Well, we know that this fall we're on a special journey together, a spiritual journey, uh, to accept the invitation of Jesus to recover your life, to discover once again that the presence of Jesus really does change everything. Now, today, I want you to know we have a different kind of service ahead, and all of it is designed to help you encounter Jesus. We've got some special moments of worship coming up, and you're going to hear from three different people today. Uh, our youth pastor, Pastor Ben Kreider, who you know well, uh, will be helping to lead us today, along with Pastors Mary and Rory Douglas, who have been pastors here in the Alma community for quite some time. And I like to think of them as the pastors to the pastors in our community. They lead the Alma Ministerial Association, and I'm so grateful uh, for their ministry and so glad to have them with us today. Well, I believe that God has something special in store for us today. I believe that today can be an encounter with Jesus. Will you pray with me? Our gracious God, we pause in your presence knowing that you dwell with us, even as we uh, gather in your name uh, across the internet today. God, I pray for each person listening today that it would be an encounter with you today. God, we open our hearts to you, and we come just as we are. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, today we're going to continue working our way through the 23rd Psalm. And I want to invite you to join me and read that psalm with me today. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today, this service will focus on the phrase in verse 3 of that psalm, he refreshes my soul. Could you use some refreshment today? Perhaps like me, you first uh, learned that phrase from a different translation, which has the phrase, he restores my soul. Oh, I can tell you, I have long loved that promise in the scripture. He restores my soul. In the moments when we are weary and overwhelmed, when we are exhausted, when we are frustrated, when our energy has run out, he restores our souls. Today, I want to invite you to pause in the presence of Jesus in the moments ahead to come just as you are, weariness and frustrations and whatever may be on your heart today. And imagine Jesus with you, your Lord, your gentle shepherd who leads you, who today wants to refresh and restore your soul. Today, allow the Lord to reassure your heart. So let's begin and worship together today wholeheartedly as we lift our eyes to Jesus. Thanks to COVID-19, we have had a seemingly legitimate excuse to watch far more TV than is healthy for anyone. Quite recently, Mary and I started watching a British TV series called The Repair Shop. We just love British TV especially whodunits. The repair shop is in fact becoming a firm favorite in the UK. Almost seven million people watch it every week. I think what draws people to it is seeing folk bring in precious items such as family heirlooms to be repaired and restored by some of the finest experts 
in the UK. Things that are very dear to them. What delights audiences is to see the reaction when people turn up to retrieve those items and find them fully and beautifully restored. Scripture tells us each one of us is made in the image of God. But life has a tendency to mess with that image. Too often, life trials leave us scarred in body, mind and spirit. But we believe um, lies about ourselves as well. Jesus himself said, in this world you will have trouble. But he also reminded us that he has overcome the world. Jesus is the master restorer. As David in Psalm 23 said, he restores my soul. Jesus doesn't just restore us, he makes us anew. That's something even a human master craftsman cannot do when trying to restore toys or furniture or anything material. But going back to the re repair store, one of the recent episodes that we were watching really grabbed me. Involved uh, in this restoration were two particular items, a violin and a camera. The violin that had uh, miraculously managed to make its way and survive through Dachau, the concentration camp during World War II. We were told by its owner that it hadn't been played in 40 years and on arrival at the repair store it didn't even have strings and it looked worse for wear. But what a joy to witness when the owner eventually returned. It was masterfully restored and was played for her by one of the best violinists in the UK. And he even composed a piece of music um, just to honor her grandfather who had played that violin for the, the last time. As she stood there, she wept on hearing the instrument beautifully played just as she remembered it as her grandfather had played it 40 years before. The second item was more than a hundred years old. It was a wooden and brass camera and it was brought into the store in a cardboard box in pieces. So many of us feel for that camera because at times, especially during this COVID pandemic, it feels as if our lives are falling apart. But with amazing patience and skill, a master camera expert cleaned, replaced, even remade some of the parts and restored the instrument to its former glory. In fact, it was last used during wartime in World War I. Its owner stood in absolute awe as it was brought out and showed to him and he said this is going to take pride of place on my mantelpiece in my home. God is in the business of restoration. In fact, he's in the business of making us anew. We only have to come to him with our shattered pieces of our lives and allow him to gently and firmly restore what the locust has eaten and to shine his light of truth on the lies that we may have believed about ourselves. And thus begins the process of being made anew as he restores the image of his Son in each of us. Thank you. Good morning, folks. Well, I don't know about you, but I've decided I'm going to stay up New Year's Eve not to welcome in the new one, but to make jolly sure this year goes. And as for um, social distancing, 
It's just crept in everywhere. Even my buttons and my clothes are social distancing. So, hey, I'm going to make sure this year moves out. Well, you've heard of the expression, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And as I was watching with Rory the repair shop programs, and I watched people walking in, carefully holding their treasure, and then putting it down, and very cautiously opening it up. And when I saw it, I'd think to myself, you must be kidding. What is it about your old, torn, broken, stained, battered, disfigured treasure that you would go to such great lengths to have them restored to their former glory? And this, I was quite puzzled about this. And then I think I, have a, I came to a conclusion. And my conclusion is, um, well, you know what? I'm going to use an illustration, and I'd love you to use your imagination with me to show you what conclusion I came to. I have in my hand, now use your imagination, a million-dollar bill. And it was given to me to give to whoever wants it. It's a genuine. And so I ask, who wants it? And you're all going, pick me, pick me. Well, you should be, because it's genuine. We're using our imagination, remember. And I say to you, oh, hold on. I put my coffee cup down on it. It's got a stain on it. Who wants it now? Ah, and I say, hold on. Did you hear that? I tore it. Who wants it now? Ah, and I say to you, just hold on. I'm going to get a pencil, and I'm going to put a moustache on him, and I'm going to disfigure him a bit. Now who wants it? Ah, oh, just hold on. How about that? I have scrunched and screwed up this million dollar note. Who wants it now? Oh, you all do still. Well, just hang on. One last thing. I'm going to stomp on it. Who wants it now? It's stained, it's torn, it's screwed up, it's stomped on. What? You all do? Why? Because it hasn't changed the value. Friends, life messes with us. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. Take heart. I know your value. I'm here to restore you. And I wanted to close with a little story, because who doesn't mind a story? It's one of my favorites. A little boy finds a piece of wood, and he lovingly carves it into a boat. Oh, it's so precious to him. And he scratches his initials like a signature on it. And then he goes down to the lake, and he sends it off. And then a gust of wind comes along and blows it out of reach, and he's devastated. He's devastated. Well, a couple of days go by, and he's walking down the street, and he walks past a trash-to-treasure store. And lo and behold, in the window, what does he see? He sees his boat, and he runs in, and he bangs on the counter, and he says, Hey, mister. There's my boat. Can I have it back? And the guy says, It's a nice boat, Sonny, but it's now mine. But, mister, there's my signature. I, I made it. it. It is mine. But it's mine now. 
If you want it, you've got to buy it. So he walks out very dejectedly, but he wants his boat back. So he collects empties, he sells newspaper, he does what he can to get the money. Once he's got the money, he dashes into the store, he slaps it on the counter and he says, Hey, mister, can I have my boat now? And the man chuckles, gives him his boat. And as he's walking out the store, tenderly holding his boat in his arm, he says to his boat, Now you are doubly mine. I made you and I bought you. And friends, the great shepherd made us. He knows us. He understands us. We carry his signature. We're made in his image. We're image bearers. And the great shepherd came and laid down his life. And his blood paid the price for us to be restored. Bless you. Precious family of God, I want to speak a priest's blessing over you. The priestly blessing comes from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Well, church family, we are so glad to be able to be in these moments of worship together with you today. We really hope that this day has been a day that God is beginning and continuing that work of restoring our souls. And so that's our prayer for you this week. We want to let you know that we love you and that we are praying for you throughout the days ahead. And so we want to be reading these words of blessing over you as we close our service today. Mm. This is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 20 to 21 in the Message Translation. May God, who puts all things together, make all things whole, who made a lasting mark through the sacrifice of Jesus, the sacrifice of blood that sealed the eternal covenant, who led Jesus, our great shepherd, up and alive from the dead. Now put you together, provide you with everything you need to please him. Make us into what gives him most pleasure by means of the sacrifice of Jesus, the Messiah. All glory to Jesus forever and ever. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Amen. And now, church family, we want to read together our closing word, and you may know this by heart already, but it's from Romans chapter 15, verse 13, if you would join me in our final word together. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.